This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 857, Why the Black Pants, and Health Cycle, both by Becca Shearn of minimalwellness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Happy Tuesday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs, all for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more. Kind of like an ongoing audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors. And then on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. First, I'd like to say thanks to Audible, our sponsor for today's episode. Visit audible.com slash OHD or text OHD to 500-500. Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks, including Audible Originals. Audible Originals are stories created exclusively for audio that you can't hear anywhere else. I'll share more about my audiobook experience at the end of the episode. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible Originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash OHD or text OHD to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash OHD or text OHD to 500-500. Now today I have two posts for you because both of them are kind of short. So you get two for the price of, well, nothing because this show's free, but you get the idea. So let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Why the Black Pants by Becca Shearn of minimalwellness.com. The other morning while trying to get my toddler dressed, I pointed out that we were both wearing black pants. Of course, she asked, why are we wearing black pants, mommy? My answer was, because it's one less decision I have to make. Think about it. How many choices do you make every morning, even before leaving the house? Should I hit snooze on my alarm? Do I have time to shave in the shower? What should I wear? What should I eat for breakfast? Should I have a second cup of coffee? If you're a parent, the number of choices increases dramatically. Notice that several of those choices include should, which implies that the choice has valuation, a correct and incorrect response, well, at least in your mind or as is frequently the situation with food choices, perceptions of good or bad. The endless stream of decisions we make during the day is actually exhausting, mentally, emotionally, and arguably physically, even if we don't consciously perceive it as such. A number of studies demonstrate that decision fatigue is a pervasive problem. As the day progresses, depending on the number, importance, and valuation of choices made, your ability to make rational decisions, especially those that depend on self-control or willpower, diminishes. Fascinatingly, poor decision-making is aggravated when blood glucose is low, as is usually the case when someone is hungry or dieting. No, you're not hallucinating. Exercising willpower is harder when you're hungry. Take a moment to think about a recent time when you had a difficult time making a decision related to food. Where were you? How many choices were available? How hungry were you? How did the situation make you feel? Generally speaking, we view choice as good when food is involved. I am thrilled when presented with a variety of healthy options. However, for some, especially those who juggle multiple dietary constraints, like food allergies or food intolerances or specific guidelines from a diet plan, etc., a variety of choices is fatiguing and may result in suboptimal decision-making. Food psychologist Brian Wansink found most people made over 200 food choices every day. When faced with that many food decisions, it's easy to see how we become overwhelmed and often revert to the easiest, most familiar, and accessible options. Personally, I try to take some choice out of the equation by maintaining habits related to food. When I go to eat at a restaurant, I order vegetarian or vegan, although I'm neither, and I look for an option that's composed mostly of vegetables, a little lean protein, some healthy fat, and complex carbohydrates. Generally, with those parameters, there are only one or two choices on the menu, so my decision-making process is far more simple. At home, I have a small number of go-to recipes and meals I prepare frequently, which saves time and energy on meal planning. I keep my refrigerator and pantry stocked with the ingredients for those meals, so I can prepare them any time. Although the word rule has negative connotations, Establishing guidelines for the types of foods you will eat takes some of the choice and consequently stress out of mealtimes. Which brings me back to the black pants. 
my wardrobe contains only what I've deemed essential. Everything in my closet serves a specific purpose and is enjoyable to wear. This structure makes getting dressed exponentially more straightforward and, modesty aside, I consistently look more put together than I have in the past. Similarly, I found that a home without much stuff is easy to keep clean, even with a toddler, and is more calming and inviting than a space that's jam-packed with things. Finally, I have habitualized many routines and made them non-negotiable. A few of my habits. A two-cup coffee limit. Conscious stress reduction. Exercise at least five days a week. Getting six to eight hours of sleep. And washing the dishes after every meal. Simplifying your diet and wardrobe, minimizing stuff, and habitualizing routines will help reduce the number of choices in your day, meaning the choices you must make are made with a fresher, more nimble, and capable brain leading to more positive outcomes. And I have another post in just a second. But first, thank you to Audible for sponsoring this episode. Visit audible.com slash OHD or text OHD to 500-500. As a podcast listener, I'm sure you enjoy being able to listen to an episode at any time of the day. You could be at the gym, shopping, or driving, and you can do the same when listening to audiobooks from Audible. That's what I do. In fact, my family knows how much I love it that I receive a subscription as a gift pretty much every year. A great audiobook I'm listening to right now is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. We've been talking about motivation on this podcast the past couple of days. And this book is great because it says, in order to stay motivated, one thing you should always ask yourself is, why? And so it talks about how leaders inspire people to take action through this process of asking the why. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash OHD or text OHD to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash OHD or text OHD to 500-500. Health Cycle by Becca Shearn of minimalwellness.com. Health is a cycle. It's a continuous feedback loop that can move in a positive direction, a negative direction, or be stagnant. The positive feedback cycle is fueled by actions such as eating a wholesome diet, exercising, sleeping, managing stress, and maintaining a supportive inner dialogue. These positive actions build on each other, resulting in improved health, greater vitality, and feeling better than you did previously. Feeling better is the ultimate carrot. It is the beautiful reward of healthy actions. Each action amplifies and strengthens the current and momentum of the cycle. The stronger the momentum of the cycle, the less impact each individual action has. In fact, some less healthy actions are perfectly normal and manageable in the positive cycle. Think about a friend who you feel is the embodiment of health. Do they always make the healthiest choices? Probably not. For these folks, part of optimal health is having the flexibility and confidence to make less healthy choices without letting it derail their overall positive direction. They order french fries, skip workouts, enjoy a celebratory weekend getaway, or get consumed by a particularly intense week or month or year with work or life in general. They have times when they put some optimal things on the back burner. The key is they usually maintain certain key health-sustaining actions, and thus their positive cycle continues, even at a slowed pace. This allows them to stick to their healthier lifestyle whenever they choose. When we ignore or don't prioritize the different aspects of health for long enough, the positive feedback loop starts to stagnate. If we make enough detrimental actions, our health cycle can begin moving in the negative direction. Of course, the triggers for a negative cycle are different for everyone, but I assure you, everyone has been in one before. Negative states shift our thoughts and feelings, making positive actions more difficult. Feelings of worthlessness, despair, and apathy can occasionally cloud even the sunniest disposition. Although reversing the momentum of a negative feedback cycle is challenging, it is possible, and it starts with one action. Once we make one intentionally positive action, acknowledge it and commit to another and another and another. Slowly, surely, 
With committed, deliberate actions, we stop the negative direction and turn it positive. Health is a cycle. We get to determine its direction. You just listened to the posts titled Why the Black Pants and Health Cycle, both by Becca Shearn of minimalwellness.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. We've been talking about motivation and willpower the past few episodes now, and I completely agree with Becca when she says, just take one step forward, even if it's just the smallest step forward, even if it's just a two-minute workout, a five-minute workout. I was just talking about that yesterday because you know what? It means you still got in two, five, or 10 minutes worth of a workout when it would have been zero. Then try and do the same thing tomorrow. Get at least a two minute, five minute, 10 minute, whatever workout in if you can. And then that may turn into a 15 minute workout the next time. Then maybe a 16 minute or 17 minute workout the time after that. And yes, we all have those days, weeks, months where we're super busy or things get really stressful and we're not as committed to some of our healthy habits like we should be. But so long as we come back to that path, as long as we don't get completely derailed or have a relapse, as long as we can eventually get back to what we were doing before to keep ourselves healthy, then that's okay. And if you wanna try and avoid some of those lapses or relapses or a full-blown collapse, one of the best things to do is, yes, Reduce the amount of choices you have to make. It's true, our brain does get overwhelmed. Now, we constantly make decisions every day. Becca gave a perfect example of just in the morning before we leave for work or school or whatever, we've made a 100 different decisions. Heck, it might have taken all of your willpower to get up and show up to the office that day or show up to class that day. So by the time you're done, your willpower is shot. So yes, if we can limit some of those choices so we don't get too off track, it can help us stay moving in that positive direction. I like to think of this process as if you've ever been bowling, there are those little bumper lanes that they use for kids. Think of limiting our choices as those bumper lanes. We don't wanna end up in those gutters on the side of the bowling lane, so we use bumpers. Think of bumpers as limiting some of our choices. Anytime you head towards that proverbial gutter, the bumper will help bounce you back on track. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.